I want to go over the big picture of how your web app works. So it all starts with the web browser here. Uh, the web browser issues a GET request. Right? And that GET request is going to go all the way to the server. Right? This is your server running in the app engine, say. And uh, the first thing it has to do is to figure out, once it's get, it gets the GET slash, it has to figure out uh, what to do with it. And the app server, the first thing you do, uh, it does, is it checks out your app.yaml file. And uh, the app.yaml file is going to tell it, you know, to uh, whether or not the file, which is the slash in this question, uh, is that going to be served from the static file or is that going to call your program, your Python program? And uh, so it decides that, let's say, it decided that, you know, slash is going to go to the Python program. Then within the Python program, uh, you again have to make the decision is slash, what's the event handler, uh, the request handler, sorry, that's going to handle that slash, the get request. And uh, so eventually it's going to figure out one of them and it's going to call the, the def, the get method in your Python code uh, for that event handler, you know, whoever it is that is handling the star, and that is the code that you're going to run. Your code is going to eventually generate a 200, hopefully, which means OK, and it's going to return some HTML uh, back to the client. So uh, when the client gets that, uh, he, he gets that HTML, he gets a 200, he gets the HTML, then the client uh, starts to parse uh, the HTML, right? It starts to go over uh, first the head element and then the body element in, in order, as you would might read it yourself. And as it does that, it, uh, it might find, you know, for example, in the head element, you know, uh, you can include uh, CSS files. So if it finds a CSS file in the head element, it is immediately going to say, oh, we have a CSS file, so let's get it. So it's going to issue a get and then you know, whatever the name was of the file that you wanted to get. And uh, similarly, uh, you might also find, as you move there to the body of the text, you might find some images. So it's going to say get uh, image.jpg. Right, and uh, also it might find some JavaScript. So you might say, oh, okay, get slash uh, script.js. So it's going to find all those things and it's going to go ask the server to get him. Again, when the server gets him, he's going to go through all this every time. So he's going to check the app.yaml is that style.js from the static or not. If it is from the static, then it's going to fetch it, you know, send it back from the static. Uh, so let's say that worked out. Uh, we get a 200 and we return the style file. So CSS and that's going to go back. And uh, similarly, uh, we're going to get back the other the image and the, uh, the script. Let's say everything worked so far. And uh, that's how that works. Image.jpg. Okay, but now let's say that once the browser gets all these, now uh, the browser starts to actually or can show the HTML page. Now in reality, you know, the browser would have started showing parts of the page up here. You know, it depends on what exactly, which tags were missing, which images were missing. And, uh, you know, the, the style, of course, you really cannot start until you get the style. Although, again, sometimes you can so, but once you got all that, now you definitely can show everything to the user. And uh, at that point, we show everything to the user. Now, let's say that this, the HTML actually contain a form element uh, with, a, you know, the pose method and an action which equals to, you know, add, uh, let's say, you know, we're adding a post or a comment to a comment form or something. And uh, it had, you know, it has some bunch of inputs, other input methods with name equals comment, 
uh, which was a text area or something. And let's say now that the user, uh, you also obviously you're gonna need a uh, submit. Uh, let's say the user finally you know fills in the comment, hits the submit button. And uh, what that is going to do now is the browser, at that moment, the browser will generate a post, right? Because we have a method of post and uh, it's going to go to slash add. Um, generally, we want to do that. And that's going to go back to the browser, but not just that, but because it's a form, uh, we're also in the HTTP headers. You might remember we're going to put stuff, you know, no, not name. But comment equals, you know, whatever the user typed in. Let's say hi there. Uh, so that's going to go, a post is going to go back to the server. The server is again, going to the app.jaml. It's going to eventually figure out that, oh no, I need to call the dev post on, the, you know, the whatever the, the event handler, the add post event handler, uh, which is going to figure out by looking at the Python code and uh, it's going to. This guy is going to use self.request.get uh, name, sorry, comment to get the comment. And um, it's going to maybe add it to the database, right? So maybe you have a comment uh, data store type data model. Um, Comment equals that guy. Uh, uh, put that one in here. Okay. So something like that. So that's gonna create the comment and uh, in your data store, and see the put is finally gonna put it in the data store. And now, so this is now in the data store. Because uh, as you remember, only the post should change your data store. Every get, no, a get should never actually put anything in the data store. Gets should be item potent. Uh, only the post should be able to change stuff in the data store. So that's what we just did. And uh, let's say you did that, and uh, so what you're gonna do at that point is you change the data store, but you still need to get back to the client, right? So the client did a post to you, but he, the browser is expecting an HTML back from you, um, or a self a redirect, right? So another option, which is very common, redirect to, you can redirect to, you know, your new post. Whatever it might be. So what that's gonna result is in a you're gonna send back a 302 and telling the guy to go or the browser to go to post one two three and that is what we're telling the browser. When the browser gets that, he is uh, next thing he's gonna do is he's gonna issue a get slash post slash one two three automatically and then of course you're gonna get that and now your def get somewhere that handles the post uh, is gonna get called and it's gonna have to generate that code uh, HTML and uh, oops It's going to generate that HTML. Um, so you're going to end up sending maybe a 200 OK with the HTML back to the server and the, the client, sorry. And the client is now going to display all that uh, just as it did before. So show HTML. And again, this new HTML page might contain uh style sheet and an image and a script and all those so this might actually result in a bunch of get 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 uh, which i don't want to show uh, but what i do want to show is uh, let's say it uh, it actually did include some javascript right so you did a get javascript and uh we just got some javascript back so uh, let me just put that in 
So get you know some script.js and uh, now we got it. Got got the script. So it's we got the script and it started running. Uh, so now your JavaScript is running uh, the JavaScript and uh, this because the JavaScript is running and let's say the user clicks on something this might actually result in another get slash data slash one dot JSON or something so it might actually result in an uh, XHR or an Ajax request and we'll see how to do those soon uh, so an AXHR and AJAX request is, is a get it's just like a regular get uh, except that it is done it is generated not by the user well not necessarily not directly by the user clicking on something it is generated by the JavaScript and more importantly uh, when you get the data back the results are given to the JavaScript those are given to the JavaScript code that invoked it, right? So this get was generated by some code, and that code gets the results back, right? So let's say that was a 200, okay, and uh, here's your JSON stuff, and there you go. So the server sent that back to me. I got it, and uh, that was given to my JavaScript. My JavaScript can then do whatever it wants with it so that means I know window uh, refresh right because the the, uh, the data is given to the JavaScript it doesn't ca cause the browser window to refresh uh, doesn't do anything in fact you can't even see it unless you're of course you're using Chrome tools which you should be using um, so that complicates it more, a bit more, right? Because now you have a get, um, um, sorry, you have a get that generates a bunch of gets. So every time the user clicks, this might generate more XHR requests uh, for more data from the user or from anywhere really. Um, but, uh, those don't cause a, a refresh and uh, so that's the big picture right so what seems simple at first you know result in a lot of gets is really not that complicated the main thing you need to understand is that yes you know when you send a page back right to the client that page is going to contain a bunch of ways for the client to get back to you right a bunch if you send back html it's going to contain a bunch of uh, style and image tags uh, that are going to get back at you. They're going to come back to your server, so you got to handle those. Your server has to handle all those GET requests and all those POST requests. The HTML can contain a form, so you might get a POST. Or your JavaScript might contain some AJAX requests that are going to get back at you. And uh, so when you're designing your server, you think about that. You think about all the possible GETs and POSTs that I'm gonna get and I have to implement every single one of them and when I return stuff I gotta think about how is that stuff that I'm sending back to the client gonna come back to me 